This week we're going to look at cell transport and three different terms. One term is called isotonic, another term is called hypertonic, and the last term is called hypotonic. I would take a moment and create a three column graphic organizer in your bill. Also, I have some related vocabulary at the top. One term is called solute, which is a substance being dissolved, such as a salt, and a solvent, which is a substance that does the dissolving, such as water. And then I have isotonic, hypertonic, hypotonic. I recommend that you pause the video and make a graphic organizer. All right, let's look at isotonic. I have a learning tool that I use and I look at the two O's on either side of the T and it kind of looks like a mirror image to me. So I call this equal or isotonic. What this means is that water flows evenly inside and out of the cell. So for example, this is a container of water. The liquid behind here is water. This is my cell, and these little greenish molecules represent salt. There are equal number of salt molecules inside as there are outside, and so water just freely flows in and out at equal amounts. This cell will not change. So in this case, there's an equal amount of solute to solvent, and so there, there is no change. The next term is hypertonic. And I like to think of this if you're hyper or hyperactive, um, you're getting really wiggly and maybe you're getting sweaty. So basically you're losing water. So that's what I like to think of is that water is being lost because you're wiggling around so much. So hypertonic is my learning tool. And so in this scenario, we have a lower amount of solute inside of the cell <clears throat> compared to outside the cell. So you can see that there's lots of salt around the outside, whereas there's only three on the inside. And so water wants to make the ratio even. It wants to flow out to dilute this group out. Okay, so water is flowing out of the cell, hypertonic, just like you're sweating, you're losing water. Eventually over time, our cell will flow out so much that it loses water and it will shrink. This is called plasmolysis and the cell shrinks. This is what happens if you drink salt water uh, or large amounts of salt water, you become dehydrated and your cells will shrink. For example, in plants, they have that large central vacuole that's filled with water. And if you water them with salt water, all of that water will flow out and the plant will wilt because it doesn't have what we call turgor pressure, which helps keep the plant upright. The last term I want us to look at is called hypotonic. And I see the word pot in here. And I think about fill the pot with water. That is my learning tool. So in this scenario, water you can see that the solute is much uh, higher inside of the cell compared to outside of the cell. So water wants to even that ratio out so that water is going to flow in. That's why we fill the pot with water. So water flows in. Over time, our cell will swell up and it can even swell to the point of bursting. This bursting is called cytolysis, bursting of the cell. For example, if you soak in the tub and you get that wrinkly skin, water basically strips oils and water flows into your cells. Also, this is why if you get an IV of a saline IV, it has some salt in it so your cells don't swell and burst. Again, remember your learning tools. Isotonic looks like a mirror image, it's equal. Hypertonic, you're sweating, you're losing water and hypotonic, you fill the pot with water, water flows in. Equal, out, and in.